Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Pastor John Pope, and I'm from Galilee Missionary Baptist Church. And we want to welcome you to another session of the Worship Hour. This week is a special week, just as every week is a special week, because God chose to give us new mercy and new compassion for today. And as he has chosen to give us that mercy and compassion, we want to praise him. We want to worship him. We want to lift him up and magnify his name. And I want to tell you something. When all of us come together to glorify and magnify the Lord, then it makes it that much better. So we want to invite you this morning. Come on, everybody. Let's go to church. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Amen. As we get ready to enter into this time of praise and worship, we want to have this morning start out with a word of prayer. Because God wants to bless his people. But he wants us in position so that we can receive the blessing. So this morning, I want to lead us in just a word. And we want to see what God is getting ready to do. This morning, I want you to prepare your hearts and prepare your minds. I want you to set aside all the troubles and the trials that you've gone through this past week. I want you to focus right now on getting to the throne of grace, being right at the foot of the Lord God Almighty. And as we are at the feet of the Lord God Almighty, we want to open our hearts and we want to render praise and worship. We want to honor him. We want to invite him in. We want God to take first place right now. We don't want all the other stuff of the world to have the preeminence in our lives. But our prayer is that now, God, you take charge. Let us all go to the throne of grace. Let us all have that time where we talk with the Lord, where we give God first place. Heavenly Father, we, we come now before you and we come to you as your humble children. We acknowledge the Heavenly Father that you are the creator and that we are the creation. As we are here, the Heavenly Father. We don't come to Heavenly Father out of any form or fashion. But we come just as we are. We realize, God, that we are not a perfect people. So, Lord, as we come, we ask that you would forgive us for our sins our transgressions. Forgive us for our acts of rebellion. Forgive us for neglecting you as we go throughout our lives. We just want to stand before you right now. Just bow our heads and acknowledge you as God. Oh, Come, O oh Lord, reach out and move from heart to heart and breast to breast. If there's a hardening in the spirit, I pray that you would break it up right now. If there's some resistance in the spirit, I pray that you would move beyond it, God. Because your people need you today. Today is all we have. Tomorrow is not promised. Look upon this place, oh God. Turn your eyes toward this place. 
Minister to us on today, Lord. Minister to us. We need you, Jesus. We thank you for everything that you're getting ready to do. Because we're believing that your spirit is going to rain down. We're believing that your blessings have already entered into this place. And we're ready to receive all that you have for us. Lord, this is our prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, Savior, and Redeemer, we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. 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 Amen.
everywhere you go. Amen. Amen. He looks over you. He protects you. He guides you. Amen. Amen. And just like that, we're about to be fed some more food. Amen. Amen. We're about to be fed the word of God. Amen. Amen. And let me tell you something. When God comes down and he anoints people, thank God for anointing our pastor. Amen. 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 Come on. Come on. Give it a Now, the one thing I can say and know, I believe that he speaks what God gives him to speak. Amen. Because like I said, 13 years, that's a long time to deal with every personality, man. Woo! I can only deal with one. So I want you to recognize who God is when he speaks to this man. Amen. So I want you to stretch your hands real quick to pastor. He needs everything that you have to give. But. Do it according to God. Amen. Amen. Expect what God is going to do for you. Amen. Amen. I want you to expect it. Amen. Don't just, mm, I want you to expect it. Say, Pastor Pope. Pastor Pope. Say, preach the word. Preach the word. Pastor Pope. Pastor Pope. Preach the word. Preach the word. Pastor Pope. Pastor Pope. Preach the word. Preach the word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now I want you to shout hallelujah. Amen. I was listening to the choir while I was in the office and I felt like jumping. Felt like singing. Felt like shouting. Oh, Lord, thank you so much for that. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Because the Lord will lead and guide us all the way. Amen. When you really know that, when you really, really know that the Lord will lead and guide you all the way, it really makes a difference in your life. Amen. Because now you can put your trust in him instead of putting your trust in you. And when you put your trust in God, God will show you some amazing thing. You know, the Lord has been blessing us ever since we walked in today. God has made his presence manifest. And in his presence, there is joy. In his presence, there is peace. In his presence, there is hope. In his presence, there is a refreshing. Because as we go through life, life can run you down. But when the Lord, the spirit of the Lord comes in, something new begins to happen. Something gets st starts to stir up on the inside. And when it starts to stir up on the inside, we have to let it come out on the outside. Amen. I'll tell you, my brothers and my sisters, if you are not acquainted with the move of the Holy Spirit in your life, I want you to know that you're missing something. If you, if we would all just uh, relax in the Lord and say come Holy Spirit and welcome him and everything that he wants to bring to our lives we would be so different amen I'm just telling you what I know because as the Holy Spirit touched my life he changed me and I'm happy for the change and I'll never go back to being the person that I used to be amen because I showed enough like who I am right now amen God is really good and my prayer is that each of us will be able to have that type of encounter with the Lord. And if you're wondering how you can have it, all you have to do is ask. There's no magic formula. All you have to do is ask and be willing to receive when the Holy Spirit comes. Amen. Because we need the Holy Spirit. Amen. We need the Holy Spirit to help us do what we need to do. I'm going to ask if you would this morning to uh, turn to Matthew chapter 28 and I have a perpetual smile on my face this morning because I'm just happy amen I'm just I'm just happy I'm not gonna get too happy because I end up crying up here amen then I won't be able to read amen then it won't be nobody but me and the Holy Ghost because I won't be able to see anything so if the Lord don't say it it won't happen amen 
We're going to look at Matthew chapter 28, and we're going to look at verses 19 through 20. Amen. Sister Tara, welcome back. Amen. Thank God for your safe travels. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. We, want, we are so thankful to have each and every one of you here today. And our prayer is that when you leave today, that you won't leave the same way that you come in. There'll be a, something just a little bit different about you. Amen. Because of what God has done. Not because of anything that I've said, but because of what God has done and what God is doing. And where he's leading each and every one of you. I want you to know that God wants us to come alongside him and to work where he is working. And if we work where God is working, we will see God do amazing things through us, with us, and for us. Amen? Amen. Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And if you are all there, would you just signify by saying amen? amen. If you need me to wait on it, wait a minute, say hold on a minute. Praise God. And the word says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Note what he says in verse 19. He says, go therefore and make. Go, therefore, and make, amen, disciples of all nations. God has given us that command, uh, the Lord Jesus has given us that command to go, amen? And what we want to do this morning is we want to tell somebody that Jesus is Lord. We want to tell somebody that Jesus is Lord. I'll say it again, we want to do what? What do we want to tell them? Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us all bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you now in the name of your son, Jesus, and we want to give you all the glory and all the honor and the praise. We want to thank you, dear Heavenly Father, because our Lord Jesus has gotten up from the grave with all power in his hand. And because he has all power to Heavenly Father, he has sent us the Holy Spirit that we might go and be his witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. We have been called to Heavenly Father, and I pray that, that you will speak to us today so that we might be prepared to go out and to accomplish your will. We thank you for everything you've done and everything you're doing. These and many of the things we pray in Jesus' name. And all God's children said amen, 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 and amen. How many of you all know that we live in a broken and a fallen world? And because we live in a broken and a fallen world, we are also a broken and a fallen people. Amen. We've been broken by sin. And if that sin is left unchecked, if it had been left unchecked, that sin would lead every person to divine judgment and eternal punishment in the lake of fire. If it had been unchecked, we all would be subject to the punishment of the lake of fire. But somebody can shout hallelujah today. Hallelujah. We can shout hallelujah because God recognized our condition and as God recognized our condition, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to redeem us from the sin that had trapped us. Somebody say, I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. I want you to know who you are today, and I want you to know the blessings that you received today. We are a redeemed people because of the work of Jesus Christ. Now, that redemption came at a high price. Because the Bible lets us know about the suffering and the misery that Jesus went through to free us from the grip of sin. Our Lord willingly bled. He willingly died a criminal's death. The son of the living God died a criminal's death on a cross on the hill called Calvary. He freed us. He freed us from the grip of sin. And if you were at Calvary and were one of his disciples, 
When his disciples saw their Lord and Master hanging up on that cross, his disciples saw the blood that was running from his body. His disciples saw him gasping for air. When his disciples saw him, his disciples had to be discouraged because they were thinking, this one, this Jesus, who is dying on that cross. He is the one that we hope would set us free from the bondage of the Romans. And when Jesus died on that cross, instead of it being a moment of sorrow, if the disciples had really understood what was going on, they would have rejoiced because at that moment when the Lord died on that cross, he set God's plan in motion to free the Jews and the rest of the world alike, not from oppression by man, but from oppression by sin. He set in motion. See, the death on the cross, Jesus' death on the cross was not the end because the Bible lets us know that Jesus got up from the grave three days later just like he said he would. He predicted it. And then it happened just like he said that it would. When he got up, I want to tell somebody, it wasn't the same Jesus. When he got up, our Lord, the Bible says that I have all power. Jesus said, I have all power in heaven and earth. When he got up, Jesus possessed all of the resources of heaven to bring to bear against the power of sin. When he rose, he rose as Lord. He rose as Savior. When he rose, he rose in his divinity. When he rose, he rose and, and he was the Lord God Almighty. Emmanuel, God with us, had risen from the dead. I'm so thankful that Jesus got up from the grave. And when he got up from the grave, the Lord was preparing to return to heaven, preparing to return to his rightful place, to return to his place of honor. But don't you know that God said that I set my death, set the plan of God, salvation in motion, and now it's time to keep that plan in motion. How did the Lord Keep the plan in motion. Well, what Jesus did is Jesus told his disciples, he gave them the great commission or the command to proclaim the good news regarding the salvation of Jesus Christ to the world. He said, go. You got to go. You got to Tell somebody, you got to let the world know that Jesus is Lord. The Lord charged the believers past and present. Hallelujah. When I say present, I'm looking at this pew. That's you. I'm looking at this set of pews. That's you. I'm looking in the pulpit. That's us. I'm looking in the, in the audio visual room. That's you. I'm looking at the folks on Facebook. That's you. Jesus said, go into all the world and to preach. Preach. Pastor, I ain't no preacher. I beg to differ. If you are a child of the living God, all preaching is is just exhorting or proclaiming the word of the living God. You don't have to be in this pulpit to preach a word. Hallelujah. You can walk up and down the street and tell somebody about Jesus. Amen. You can walk up and down the street and tell somebody how good God has been to you. Hallelujah. You can walk up and down the street and tell somebody about the love that God has not only for you, but for them also. Come on, preachers. Preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. The Lord has given us Plenty of opportunity to lead a soul from impending death to an everlasting relationship with Jesus Christ. See, when you think about it, and you know how we do as people, we always overthink things. We make things harder than what they really are. Oh, I can't. 
I can't, I can't stop this. I can't do this. I can't nonsense. See, we've been called to evangelize the world. We've been called. And I want to tell you something, that if God has called you to it, truly he will see you through it. If God has called you, then God will empower you. If God has sent you, the Lord Jesus said, Lo, I will be with you always, even till the ends of the earth. And then he sealed the deal and said, Amen. Let it be so. We don't have to worry about turning our backs on our evangelistic responsibility. All we have to do is remember that God sent us. Still, still has some trepidation because, you know, it's some hard people out there. Well, I want you to think of somebody that you know very, very well. And, and I want you to think about how God changed their lives. Now, before you go too deep and you start thinking about Cousin Susie, and before you start thinking about Brother Bobby, and before you think about Grandmama and all them other people, that's not the person I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is I'm talking about you. See, one day God sent somebody to you to tell you about Jesus Christ. Somebody, one day God sent somebody to you to let you know that God loves you and that you could have a relationship with him. And guess who listened to what that person had to say? You listened, and now your soul has been saved. Well, if God can send somebody to you and you change, can't you go to somebody else and help them to change? It's time to tell somebody. That Jesus is Lord. That same gospel that worked and changed your life is the same gospel that will change somebody else's life. We live in the generation of now. We want everything right now. Well, I'm telling you right now it's time to tell somebody about Jesus. I want to tell you that right now is the time for us to have a made up mind. Jesus came along and got 12 disciples and turned the world upside down. I don't even have to go back three or four rows and I see more than 12 people in here. If we make up in our minds that we're going to obey the Lord, if we make up in our minds that we're going to love the Lord, if we make up in our minds that we're going to serve the Lord, then we will be able to do the same thing that the disciples did, making a difference wherever we go. All we got to do is have a made up mind. You know how headstrong some of you all in here. I don't have to tell you. I know, y'all know, y'all know, y'all know. You know how headstrong you are. When you make up in your mind to do something, you, that's what you're going to do. Make up in your mind that you're going to serve Jesus. Make up in your mind that you're going to share the love of the Lord. Make up in your mind that you're going to obey what God has to say because we want to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see that photo? That's a, a photo of all the continents of the world. And there are hands that are going out, black, white, Asian hands, all types of hands that are going out. And what are they doing? They're sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Anybody want to share the gospel of Jesus Christ? Anybody want to win somebody to Christ? You can make a difference because God has already called you. God has already put his stamp of approval on you. God has already put the Holy Ghost down on the inside of you. God has already given you his word so you will have a guideline to follow when you go out. Let the Lord order your steps. If we want to turn, change the world and turn the world upside down, Yvette, that's you. Mm, you can do it. I know you can do it. All we have to do is make up in our mind and say, Lord, I'm going to obey you. I'm going to obey your commands. See, in Matthew 28, 19, Jesus gave us marching orders. In Mark 16 and 15, Jesus gave us marching orders. And those marching orders were very similar in those two passages. Because in the first word of those two passages, it said, go. It said, go 
There's your command. There's your imperative. Are you ready to obey soldiers who are in the army of the Lord? You know you sing that song all the time. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord, and I promise him that I'm going to serve him till I die. Well, soldiers, it's time to get up and go. The Bible says that we ought to go into all of the world. See, because God has a plan for you and for me. He has planned to use the belief. The believers. Somebody, are you a believer? Are you a believer? See, God planned to use the believers. Don't worry about complaining when the world does what the world does because the world's going to do what the world's going to do. The question is, are the Christians going to do what God has required us to do? <laughs> Hallelujah. God wants us to witness to all mankind. He wants us to tell the world about the work of the salvation that Jesus completed on the cross at Calvary. God has a plan for man. And if we turn to the word of God and look at 1 Timothy 2 verses 4 and 6, we'll see what that plan is. Because God's desire is that all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. All men. God says, I want the drunkard saved. I want the dope head saved. I want the murderer saved. I want the thief saved. I want the prostitute saved. I want the corrupt businessman saved. I even want the person who's faking and shaking and begging in church. I want them saved. I want all of them saved. And he's going to use us. He's using us to go out and share the good news. We need to tell somebody that there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. We need to tell somebody that Jesus Christ gave himself for all that we might be justified and we might testify to the goodness of the Lord in due time. You got a word down on the inside of you. Let the word of God be manifest in your life. Walk the walk and talk the talk. God is calling us to go minister to our families. You know that hard-headed brother you got? You know that crazy sister you got? You know that unruly child? Minister to him. When you have an opportunity and they're doing something crazy, don't you respond with crazy. You ain't got to respond with crazy. You respond with Jesus. You respond with prayer. You respond with the word of God. Turn everything, as my wife likes to say, turn it right back to Jesus and let God handle the situation. God has given us a message that can change the lives of any and everybody who hears it. The question is, are we willing to obey the command to go, to go and be the Lord's witnesses wherever we go. Are we willing to go and share the good news? We got to obey the Lord. But if we also want to turn the world upside down, we have to share the love of God. We have to share the love of God because we live in a world where people are always looking for love. There was a song out by a man named Johnny Lee that said that we're looking for love in all the wrong places. Amen. Looking for love in all the wrong places. And that's the problem is people often turn to the wrong people or bury themselves in the wrong habits as they search around for that perfect love. Can I tell somebody a secret? Don't tell nobody. Well, no, you got to tell somebody. You got to tell somebody. The only perfect love is found in Jesus Christ. That's the secret. But it's not a secret anymore because I just told all y'all. And I know y'all going to tell somebody. Don't try, to, don't, don't, don't try to pretend like you can, hold, you can hold water. You know you can't hold water. Somebody tell you something good, you got to go out and tell it. Hallelujah. Well, I want you to go out and tell this. The perfect love is found in Jesus Christ. We got to share the love of God with others. But not only do we want to share the love of God with others, we want to help others to grow in their relationship with the Lord God Almighty. See, we 
not only have the commands to go, but we also have the command to make disciples and to teach and to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy, Sco and the Holy Ghost. We have the command to go and make disciples and teach. As we've entered into a relationship with the Lord, we want to help everybody understand the nature of the love that they have. The love that we have is a free gift from God. It's a free gift from God. John 3, 16, all y'all know it. Come on, everybody say it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that... I had to shut up because I could only hear myself. I wanted to make sure y'all were talking. <laughs> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. See, my brothers and sisters, God has given us this gift of love to wipe away all our sins. Hallelujah. He's given it to us. Amen. But he didn't mean for us just to hold on to it. What God wants us to do now is our turn to give out. Amen. You have been receiving. I have been receiving. And now it's time to give out. Everybody ready to give out? Amen. Our turn to tell somebody. It's our turn to share. It's our turn to open up that hand and say, I want to give my brother and my sister who is lost that free gift that God has given unto me. See, we ought to be able to appreciate the gift because the Bible lets us know that uh, not only did God love the world, but the Bible says, but God commended his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In other words, when we were at our very worst, God chose to love us so much that he considered us deserving of his best. Now, I grew up in the church. Amen. But how many of y'all know I wasn't a saint? I'm going to tell the truth. Shame the devil. I'm, I'm not afraid to admit it. I remember several nights that I came home a little bit later than I was supposed to come home and thought I was sneaking in the house and I stepped on that one board in the living room and it started creaking and mom and daddy woke up. Mm -hmm. Yep, I remember. I remember. I remember being in those places that I shouldn't have been in. And some things happened. I had to hit the floor immediately because I was in danger of losing my life. I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. I remember hanging out with the wrong folks. Folks I shouldn't, if mom and daddy told me not to hang out with. But you know what? I found them so interesting that I just wanted to hang out with them. Even though I grew up in the Sunshine Band. Even though I grew up with Vacation Bible School. Even though I grew up with Sunday School. Even though I grew up with the church. I still had a ways to go. When I was at my worst, God chose to give me his best. Anybody been at your worst and God has given you his best? We have a love. We have a love that we need to tell somebody about. We got a story to tell. Oh, we don't have to walk around high and mighty and all sanctified because we ain't been sanctified all our whole life. But we do need to be who we are now. We do need to act like children of the living God. Amen. Amen. We can act like children of the living God, but we got a story to tell. We got a great story to tell. I love the way, I love the way that Dr. Robert Lee talks about our story. He says some sinner needs to know that God solved our sin problem at Calvary. You couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Mama couldn't do it. Grandpa couldn't do it. Bishop so-and-so couldn't do it. Apostle so-and-so couldn't do it. But Jesus did it on the cross at Calvary. He solved our sin problem. Some sinner needs to know that our death sentence was revoked. I've never been under a death sentence, Pastor. Yes, you were. You just didn't realize it, that you had a death sentence hanging over your head. Hell was in your view. 
You had a death sentence over your head. You were about ready to be separated from God for eternity. But God took care of the problem when Jesus was on the cross at Calvary. Some sinner needs to know that not only was the death sentence revoked, but the fountain of salvation was unsealed when Jesus shed his blood on the cross at Calvary. Some sinner needs to know that the doors of heaven were open when Jesus hung his head and died and said, it is finished. It is finished. And when they took him off the cross, the devil thought he had the victory. But God knew that it was not over. God knew that it was not over. Friday wasn't long enough for him to be in the grave. Saturday wasn't long enough for him to be in the grave. So early on Sunday morning, I said early on Sunday morning, God says I'm going to change my people's destiny because Jesus got up from the grave. Go out and tell somebody. If you can't think of one scripture to tell them, just walk around and start singing that when you were sinking deep in sin, Far from the peaceful shore, sinking to rise no more. You just let them know love lifted me. What you talking about love? I'm talking about the love of Jesus. I'm talking about the love of God. Love lifted me. It's time to share the good news and tell somebody that Jesus is Lord. God's love is amazing. <laughs> We have an opportunity to change the world, my brothers and my sisters. Somebody say change. Now, here's what I want you to embrace. Say, I am a change agent. I can bring change to the world. Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Therefore, I am a change agent. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Share the love of God. Share the love of God with the world. But I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, don't just do it on Sunday. Don't just do it on Monday. Don't just do it in 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, or 2025. We got to stay committed. We have to stay committed to serve in the Lord. Somebody say committed. committed. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you're in a love relationship, but you know how it is in relationships. Sometimes we get in a relationship and all we do is rely on love to get us through. Oh, I love her. I love him. That is until they get on your last nerve. Then you tell them, get out my face. I don't talk to you no more. You make me sick. But the question is, if you're in a true relationship, are you committed to the relationship where you don't just rely on love to keep you together? See, love is a wishy-washy thing. Amen. Love is a wishy-washy thing. It's okay. I see, I, I, I see some of y'all sitting together right now. Y'all all close. You know how they do it. All close and hugged up, right? But let them wake up in the morning on the wrong side of the bed and... It, She'll be over here and he'll be way over there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because, yeah, that's right. Isn't that's what I'm saying. Because they say it's all about the love. No, you got to get past love and you got to be committed. Because if you're committed, no matter what goes on, you'll be able to weather the storm. Amen. Because storms happen to everybody. Amen. Storms happen to everybody. And if we are going to be a people who turn the world upside down, if we are going to be a people who are able to nurture and, and, and make new disciples and help them become mature Christians, if we are going to be people who are going to be able to teach people to obey the commandments of the Lord, then we're going to have to be committed to serving God. Committed to serving God. Somebody say, I'm committed. I'm committed. Don't tell a lie now. Don't tell a lie. Are you committed? I'm committed to serving the Lord. Our goal as believers in Christ is to become well-versed 
in the word of God. Because when we become well versed in the word of God, then we can begin to understand the requirements of God. And then after we understand the requirements of God, then we'll be able to walk in the anointing and the power of God. And that's what we need is to walk in the requirement on the anointing and the power of God. So I want to let you know that trouble's going to come your way. Tr trouble, trouble, trouble going to happen. And all you trying to do is you trying to do the right thing. Trouble's going to come your way. But I want to tell you that no matter the trial or the temptation, I encourage you, my brother, I encourage you, my sister, not to stop following the will of the Lord God Almighty because the work that you do, the work that I do, has life and death consequences. It has life and death consequences. I remember there was a story that I read about a young man a tragic story this young man murdered 17 people and he went to trial and after he went to trial he was sentenced he received a death sentence while he was in prison there was a woman a Christian woman and she went to visit him in, 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 in prison and wanted to share the Lord with him and that man did not want anything to do with that woman he didn't want to hear her word. He didn't want to respond or anything like that. So the woman left the prison. But when that young man was in need of warm clothing so he could stay warm in the prison, she sent him warm clothing. When that young man was in need of food while he was in prison, she sent him some food. When that young man was in need of prayer, because of things that were going on, she prayed for him. He sat there on death row. And that young, that young man kept hearing from that woman. And one day he wrote some letters to the woman. And as he wrote the letters to the woman, he let her know that today, I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Amen. And after he received Jesus as Lord and Savior, that young man began to witness to everybody. He began to witness to the inmates. He began to witness to the guards. He began to witness to everybody. And he introduced a whole lot of people to Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, that young man witnessed all the way up to the time that he was executed. When they had him getting ready for the execution, he told everybody, he said, I want you to know that I've made things right with my Lord and Savior. And I'm going home to be with Jesus Christ. And I just want to know. Is there anybody in here today that wants to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? I'm not worried about what's getting ready to happen to me, but I'm worried about what's getting ready to happen to you. Somebody touched a person who most people considered untouchable. And that untouchable young man gave his life to Jesus Christ and he touched the lives of many other people in prison we live in a broken world and i want to tell you my brothers and my sisters no matter how hard the task may be don't you give up don't you give in don't you give out don't you quit on serving the lord don't you stop telling somebody about the fact that jesus is the lord see if we love the lord like we say we do <laughs> We're going to do everything in our power, hallelujah, everything in our power to let people know about the hope that's found in Jesus Christ. See, I know there's hope in Jesus because our Lord took our beatings, amen. Our Lord took our abuse, amen.
I know that there's hope in Jesus because our Lord paid that sin debt that you and I could not pay. I know that there's hope in Jesus Christ because our Lord bled and died a shameful death that was meant for criminals, not meant for the son of the living God who is also the second person of the Godhead. It was not meant for him, but he took that punishment so that you and I could live. I'm thankful that Jesus gave his life on the cross at Calvary. I'm thankful that even though he was laid in a borrowed tomb, that that wasn't the end of the story. I'm thankful that he got up on that Sunday morning. I'm thankful that he walked the earth for that 40 days, and then he gave a commission and a command to his disciples to carry on the word of evangelizing the world. I'm thankful that the Lord has trusted us enough so that he would allow us to be able to carry the word to the Lord, to the lost souls of this world. I'm thankful that God loved us so much that he gave us his very best. I'm thankful that God is still walking with us as we go through our daily mission. I'm thankful that God has not turned his back on us. I'm thankful. Is anybody thankful that God loves you the way that he loves you? Hmm. We have a charge to let the world know that Jesus lives. We have a charge to let the world know that Jesus is offering eternal life to anyone. I don't care what you've done. I don't care who you used to hang out with. I don't care how bad you were. I don't care what rank you held in the gang. It doesn't matter if you were a major or a general or whatever the situation may be. I don't care if you were a bank robber. I don't care if you have actually taken somebody's life. I don't care what you have done because I don't have to care because God doesn't care what you've done. What he does care about is whether you are going to accept his forgiveness and receive the salvation of the Lord. Hallelujah. God says, I can take anybody. I can take anybody. Come as you are, and I will clean you up and make you heaven ready. Hallelujah. I like that. I want to be heaven ready. Anybody want to be heaven ready? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to expect good things to receive good things. But we also have a work to do. We have a heavy message that we have to carry. It's a heavy message, but it provides a great outcome for anybody who will receive it. The Lord let us know that if we would receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, that we would have eternal life. We can count on that because God raised Jesus from the dead. And he sits at the right hand of the Father for all eternity. And because he sits at the right hand of the Father for all eternity, since he has eternity before him and he promised us eternity, we can trust that we have eternity before us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and all that you are doing. We are the change agents. God has commissioned us to go tell somebody. We are the change agents. God wants us to let everybody know that Jesus is Lord. We are the change agents. I want to tell you, my brothers and my sisters, embrace your responsibility. Embrace your role. And let's go out and tell somebody, tell anybody, tell everybody that Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen. And amen. Praise God. We give God all the glory and the honor and the praise this morning. And as we give him the glory and the honor and the praise, what we want to make sure of is that if there is anybody in here today who does not know Jesus Christ in the pardoning of your sins, that today would be the day that you would receive the Lord as your Lord and Savior. Let us all stand for our benediction and closing prayer. Father God, we come in the name of your son, Jesus, and we thank you for all you've done. 
We thank you for all that we have heard today. Now, Holy Spirit, I pray that you would move on each one of us, move on each one of us, giving us the power and the boldness to be able to go out and to proclaim the good news about the saving grace of Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world. Help us, O oh Lord, because we cannot do it on our own. We need you. As you put people in our path, put the words in our mouths, and then help us to speak the words because we want to glorify and magnify your name. Send us to those places where you would have us to go and help us to share the gospel. God, we thank you for all you've done for us. Now help us to be a blessing to someone else. We pray for all who are on the prayer list. We pray for all those who are unchurched. Lord God, that you would have your way and you would bring about a change in the lives of all of these people. Now, Lord, we pray that the grace of Jesus, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit will rest, rule, and abide with us all. And all God's children join in together and we sing. May you go in peace. Praise God, everybody. We thank God because I knew that God was truly going to show up, and he did. God showed up, and he blessed us in the house of the Lord. You know, we always need a reminder that Jesus is coming soon. And when we come to church, we do have that time of praise. We do have that time of worship. But when we leave, we want to leave with the understanding that we want to live a life that is pleasing and acceptable to the Lord. We want to please him because one day we want to get to heaven. And if we do not conduct ourselves in a righteous manner, we might just miss heaven. We had a message today that said, don't let him catch you with your work undone. Are you ready? Are you ready for the return of Jesus Christ? Are you ready for him to receive you are you ready to stand before the Lord and have him say, well done, my good and faithful servant? I pray that you are. You know, here at Galilee, we like preaching and teaching the word. And we'd like to invite you to join us for any of our worship services. You can come on Wednesday night at 615 for our Bible study, on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for our Sunday school, or even the worship hour at 10 a.m. Better yet, why don't you join us for all three of them? We would love to have the opportunity to love on you. If you can't be with us here in person at 721 West 19th Street, you know you could join us on our Facebook page, you can join us on YouTube, or you can join us at the Gospel America Network. And you'll find the addresses for those different venues at the bottom of your screen. Tune in. We would love to worship with you. We pray that God will bless you and that God will keep you. That is our prayer. Have a very blessed day.